Hi, this is Debbie from Debbie's Crafty Hands. Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be playing with lolly sticks and we're going to be making some earrings. So this is the hook that goes around your ear. This little bit here is where the earring hangs on to and I've got some plastic backs that go onto that. So I've got a few of those. I also have some jump rings which attach to the little hoop and then will attach to the end of my lolly stick. I've got lots of goodies to play with here. Um, I've got some nail art stickers, um, there's some bumblebees, some ladybirds, some flowers, so I'm going to have a little play with them. I've also got some wrapping paper which um, I was lucky to get hold of um, and I'm going to be sticking the wrapping paper onto the lolly stick to give me a, a nice pattern. So I have various different colour nail polishes. I've got a lovely sort of dusky pink. I've got a gold confetti. I've got a blue confetti. I've got clear polish for going on the top. And I've got some greeny, yellowy colour. I've also got some gems and some little trinket things to play with and some back pearls and some sequins. I've also got a couple of wooden letters, D for Debbie's Crafty Hands, and I thought they may go quite nicely on the bottom I don't know if I can cut them in half or not, but we'll have a go. So, let's see which one are we going to start with. Let's start with the, the paper one. So basically I want to put some glue on my stick. So I've got my paper upside down, I've got my stick here. I'm going to put some glue on my stick, stick it to my paper, and then I'm going to trim round, and then I'm going to do the other side with the other bit of paper. I'm using my cow glue for this and I will just squidge it on. I can always come in and tidy the edges up if need be. Now I'm doing this before I cut in the piece. What I want to do is cut it in half so that I've got one half for each earring. I'm going to be smearing this so it's nice and even. I'm not sure what the pattern's going to be on the other side but it's all part of the fun. Push that nice and smooth. So I'm going to cut it with my knife rather than my scissors because it's going to be easy to go around the contours. And I'm just lightly pressing, cutting there. Just pressing down to make sure it's nice and even. Smooth this out, same as the other side. I'm on a slight angle because I want a bit of paper around the edge so I can cut it neatly. That nice firm press. Quite handy things to collect to collect them in the summer and then use them up in the winter. It only takes a few minutes to sort of set the, the glue. Now it's a little bit come away from the edge here, but that's fine because I'm going to edge it anyway. I did that with my knife, I think. I tried to do too much at once. That's the thing, you have to go quite slow and steady with this. Unless you wait for it to dry fully. Okay, so we have both sides nice and pretty. Okay, so while that's drying nicely, that's start the next one. Now I did put some green on this and it didn't go on very well. The, the nail polish was a bit goopy um, but it's given a bit of texture. So I think what I'm going to do because this is a, a not a similar colour but from the same colour palette I'm going to paint onto this one. Give me a polish a good shake. I did shake them up before I started but they've been sitting for a little while so. This is a quite a, a new one so it's not too bad. I might have to give several coats but I don't mind if the green shows through because it'll give a nice model of So you can do these in like a mass make type thing because you need to wait for things to dry in between. Unfortunately I could only find the shape lolly sticks. And then I wanted one in this pinky colour. Oh, this is pretty. I like that colour. Very elegant. Nice and sparkly. That'll go lovely with my pinky sequins. 
and get them all prepared. And you can do this like in so you can, you know, when you're painting your nails, paint a lot of you going along between waiting for your nails to dry, maybe. And then you've got them all ready. Just need to hold this down. Do this end. Okay, so there's those two. And I will let them dry. Do another coat. This one I want to do, just file the edges just to get them nice and smooth around the sides. Just using a normal nail file. Okay, so what I want to do around the edge of this, I want to edge it black. So I've got my permanent black marker. I'm going to go very carefully so I don't draw all over everything. And I'm just going to work my way around the edge. You can do all sorts of things. I mean, the world's your oyster with imagination on this sort of thing. Because they're, I think, made out of balsa wood, if I'm correct. Um, they're very lightweight, so they don't weigh you down. They look nice and chunky, but they don't weigh your ears down. Unlike the chandeliers I've got on today, which is quite heavy, but I like the movement in them. So These ones I didn't make. These ones I got from a charity shop. Always fishing around for earrings Add to my collection. Right, so I'm going to let that dry. But be careful not to get um, polish on my fingernails because I can't wear polish to work. So that should be enough for that one. Let me come back to the pink. I do like this pink. It's very, very pretty. I've got to go through all my nail polishes. That's one of my jobs. And my clearing out, sorting out and using up, etc to um, go through all my nail polish and work out what I can keep and what I can't because some of them I have had for absolute years and they are just no good. Okay, so the next stage is to find the centre. Actually, I think that pink is quite nice with that. So I'm going to do a D and maybe I can paint it in that colour. First of all, I want to try and find out if these will come apart. But I'm not going to use it on my D's because if it doesn't work, I don't know if I've got any others in there. So I'm going to do it on the I. And I think they will. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's lovely. Yes, they're not quite so chunky then. I should be able to file it down. I've not tried this before, so that's why a bit of an experiment. All right. My eyes can go over there, and let's see if we can get these to do the same trick. Just working the blade down along the middle edge bit here. Yay, it's come apart. Yay. Lovely. So I can do one there. I've got to make sure the orientation's right on these, haven't I? So I might stick them on once I've done the earrings so I know what way they're heading. Otherwise, we could have deeps upside down and back to front and all over the place i'm just literally going oh no don't split i want you to split not at the top bit split and no it's the one's a bit chunkier than the other i'm just trying to even up the edging of the back on here because it's very lumpy yeah that'll work with all the bits okay so we prep that bit what i might have to do is pause for a second get my hair dryer out and give them a bit of a blast and come back to you so i'll be back to you in a minute so all you've missed is doing a dub a second coat on the back and a clear coat on the top of each one of these three i'm now going to do my pink on my letter and a bit of a laugh because without thinking it through i decided to use my hair dryer to dry the nail polish on the sticks and forgetting that I had sequins on my desk so I had to rally round and gather up the sequins again because they blew all over the place so that was a bit of fun oh yes they look very pretty in the pink no no we don't be joining up together just yet that's quite going right stay stay where I put you thank you you only have to do one side of these the other side will be glued down it's not so bad and i'm not sure that i will need another coat either because they're going on quite nicely apart from leaping about all over the place while these are drying around this one i use the 
Sharpie black um, pen. Around this one, I've got my acrylic markers and I've chosen a nice sparkly pink to go on to this one. And I'm trying to decide between the yellow and the green for this one. And I think I'm going to go for the sparkle. We do love a little bit of sparkle. So that one's just got the other top coat to do on the other side and round the edges. These have got to dry. Let's see if we can get some of the decorations ready. So I want some sequins on this. Just about to see it on my hand. These are the tweezers. You can see the size. Very, very tiny. But I'm thinking if we go on delicately again, I might be able to put it in the centre of my sequin to hide the whole of the sequin. And that would look quite pretty. So, how many do we need? In what pattern are we going to? Have? Still getting used to these tweezers and flicking everything everywhere. One, two, three, maybe on each side. Obviously, when I put them on, they'll be rearranged a little bit better, but just to get the idea of size. So, we'll have a little cluster on each end and then each side because they will be swinging and you want to see the back and the front of them. So I will need three, six, nine, twelve of the purple. Right, so that's more than enough there and I need twelve of those little goldy ones, don't I? You can use other sealants other than sort of clear polish. But this is what I've got to hand, so this is what I'm using. And it just really seals it in nicely. Apologies if I was off screen during the last one. The coordination of trying to work out what you're doing, remembering what you just done, keeping in screen, keeping talking. <laughs> I'm still getting used to it. Only 30 odd videos in and I'm still getting used to it. But I'll get there. That's that one. It's because I'm on super zoom as well at the moment because when I'm using small stuff every movement is um, larger than life, shall we say. No point in doing the edges of the other one yet, because we haven't done it. We haven't painted the edges yet. Just gives it a nice little shimmer. Right, now we can paint on a deed. Give them a bit of shimmer. It's all waiting for things to dry, so it's a good project to do over a week or something. You do a little bit and then you do a little bit more and come back to it when it's dry, that sort of thing. And you have to get your friends and family to eat the lolly sticks and uh, not eat the lolly sticks, eat the lolly and give you the sticks. Not a good idea to eat the lolly sticks. Just decorate the lolly sticks instead. So I'll make sure I seal that up, otherwise there will be bits everywhere. Might have to pause you a second. Dry this lot off. Right. All I've done is finished off the edges, dried everything and got them ready for decoration. So, we need to find the middle, and I think they're all the same length. Just under two and three quarters, which is a very awkward. Just over seven, two millimetres. So half of seven is three and a half. So three and a half and a millimetre. Okay, what to use are? Trusty fine marker, so three and a half. I'm just going to do a little dot there and a line to cut. They don't have to be 100% accurate, but just a guideline. You can always straighten them up and even them up afterwards. A rough guideline. I don't want to make too much of a mark because um, I don't want it to show up on the earring itself. Give it a guide to cut. Right, so I'll start with this one, and it's just a matter of these do actually cut very nicely. It's a matter of going very slowly, it's even strokes, good pressure. You need plenty of blade showing so that you got just keep going through. Don't be tempted to pull it and fold it because you'll end up with it splitting. It's a little bit, but it does do it nicely. Come on, you're nearly there. I can feel it nearly there. Yeah. She's going to go any minute now. 
because you've got quite a few layers to go through that you've already put on with the polish and the fur and all the rest of it. Let's try from the other side. Just turn it and then, because sometimes you, you end up going at a bit of a slant, so you turn it and come from the other side. But right, I've bent it, but I've not bent it all the way. I think it's a slightly narrower head as well, so yeah, slightly different shapes. So it must be a different make, but we got through it. So, so all we need now is to do the top bit. Don't need necessarily to glaze the top bit. But need it to match. So hopefully, they are pretty much the same length. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Slightly wonky line there, but they uh, match up pretty well, so that's good. Now we want to put our hole in the top, and then I'll bring in the big guns here. Now. I don't want a big hole because I'll use my cropper dial and make a little hole but I don't want to come in too far so I'm going to move my marker to about four eighths let's see how that comes down that in flat and then you can see roughly how far in I want it nice and even either side don't want it too far down so I've got it where I want it. Now I'm going to move the bar up a bit more so it's even on both sides. And I'm going to squeeze. And I have my hole. Yeah, you can see the white board through the hole. Okay, so I'm going to do the next one. I need to poke the bit out there because it it's a bit chunky. All right, line this one up. Now these earrings aren't going to match exactly anyway the paper's different but they will go with each other as we say i'll do one completely through and then i'll see if time if i got time to finish the other ones at least decorate them show you what i'm going to do all right okay so i need some jump rings and i need my next set of tools which are two flat nose pliers so i need one set of pliers here and one set of pliers here i just need to go opposite ways to each other don't pull it outwards you have to twist it opposite ways otherwise it won't go back into the circle itself so now we have it open on the ring and that should be hopefully enough to get the jump ring into the hole not quite just a tiny bit more come on in you go. No, even more. Oh, this is a fussy one. Never mind, we'll get it done. Ah, I think it was my pliers that were causing the problem because I was trying to put it in with the pliers in the way. Hold that one. And hold that one. And attempt to pull them back together. Pull them past each other and then back again. And that should close them up. I am not a jewellery expert by any means, guys. I just play at it. That won't come out, but uh, I'm hoping uh, it needs to be sealed a bit more. On the videos, they make it look so easy, don't they? With me, you get real life and you get all the trials and tribulations that go along with it. Okay, that one's on. Okay, next. Now then, let's try this one. So remember, take the pliers out of the way. Don't open it up quite so much. Normally I'd have this very close to my face as well, but having to do it in camera is making it a little bit more tricky. She says making up excuses. Hopefully, that's not quite enough, I don't think. Hopefully that's enough. Hey, and it went in. Beautiful. Told you the next one bit easier i haven't done these for a while either you go there and you go there and have we got you close together pretty much has and then this jump ring i'm going to glue into the top of the ring and then it will swing from this piece like the hanging where it hangs into your ear a lot better otherwise you've got too much um friction going on i'm just going to put some of my 
halal glue in the top there. I think those yellow um, pliers are a little bit loose as well. The other ones are better. Do that bit in a minute because I've just realised I need to lay that flat so to do my decoration. Right, so we have the two things here. So what I'll do is I'll put my D's on, I'll put my ears sides on, then I'll finish them all up and I'll show you in the thumbnail how they resulted because I'm running fast running out of time now. So you think, oh, I'll just make a couple of pairs of earrings and then you don't realise quite how long it takes. So these are both got to go that way, preferably on the actual earring itself and try and get them as level as I can. That looks about right. So, and then we can turn them over and put the D's on the other side. When you do yours, you could, you know, obviously take more time and let things dry in between a bit better, that sort of thing. I'll be rushing on the constraints of the video timings. Well, we level with the other side. There. And there. Nasty. They're very lightweight, even with the D on it. But I'm glad I split the D because it looks a lot nicer than the thick, chunky bit, and also makes my supplies go further. Okay, right. So to put the actual earring piece on, you just literally do the same as before. You pull your loop back, not to the side. Um, pop your hoop through. So I have a a little bit of an opening there, which then hooks into my earring, and then I close it up. So these um, earring hooks and the plastic hooks you can get online quite easily, either from Amazon or. I think I got these from Wish, um, or maybe I haven't tried Timu yet for jewellery findings, but I will have a go at them. So we'll take these out. I find it pulling up towards me a little bit easier, and then I can pull it down rather than pulling it back. But you'll find your own way to do it. Uh, no, don't flick up on me. Squeeze the backs a little bit. Put that in. Anyone squeamish about earrings, look away. I will find the hole. Where are you? That's it. That's one. And that's two. And there we go, folks. I'll finish the others and you'll see them in the thumbnail. Thanks for watching. Much love, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye for now.